Minister. This telescope was begun following the best practices and lessons learned from previous sphere-mounted prototypes. The tooling was coming along well, and the 42-inch diameter sphere tool was impressive and large. I did have concerns over lifting such a large integrated fiberglass tube assembly. In a mental note, I double-checked my weight and balance tables, which I had prepared for sizing and balancing its components. Upon further review, the message was, stop work, check and look to see what you have. What jumped out, as commonly happens, the problem was obvious. The weight and balance protocol used is a very convenient tool for summarizing weights, and especially the balance situation. Essentially, all the components are identified with weight estimates, but particularly their centers of gravity are also estimated using X and Y coordinates. The Z is usually symmetrical and is balanced anyway. The weights shown here are in pounds, and the X's and Y's are in plus or minus inches. A quick look at the chart flags that the A2 upper tube has a very high mass moment that's in column MMY, a high moment of 1,050 inch pounds with an out of balance moment of plus 493 inch pounds, and that a 36 pound counterweight must be added to bring it into balance. Normally, one needs only to play and juggle numbers until it's balanced. However, this one figure is excessive, meaning it's time to review basic assumptions and more likely the architecture. A common solution is to get weight out of a telescope by going to a truss structure. I had explored that direction some time ago with an 8-inch RFT sphere mount in a 17-inch diameter sphere, and I employed an offset brazed aluminum tube construction. I decided to explore this again and see what the numbers were. In the workout, these changes were incorporated and it was determined that a 36-inch diameter sphere could be used. The total moving weight was reduced from 148 pounds to 76 pounds. This could be workable. Working in aerospace, I was aware of and recognized the weight-saving advantages of using graphite epoxy composite-type construction as used in the Boeing 787 and the Airbus A350. In the workout, the 76 pounds are further reduced to 60, but more importantly, the sphere is reduced in size to 30 inches in diameter, giving it a clear handling advantage. Note also that the groupings are separable components for transit, the largest of which is the primary mirror and cell at 35 pounds. This final view shows how a partial collar layup at the truss sphere interface makes a clean disassembly feature for handling the primary mirror being half the weight. This also gives a sense of scale to the truss. The basin depth dimensions show options. Depending on the weight, the payload is variable. From the balance table, the payload Y moment arm of 62 inches is balanced by a counterweight moment of 13 inches, meaning that for every pound of payload added, almost five times more must be added for counterbalance. I got my old 12-inch uh, scope in a 30-inch sphere, and what I wanted to do is to cast a new um, a new mold. So I built this structure, built this uh, triangular structure to support the uh, the diameter, so that I can make a, a pure hemisphere mold cast. With this arrangement, I can get six points of contact to hold the the form reasonably flat. And this is an epoxy tool. Okay, this is the situation. I got the thing on its side. I cast the original thing in November. That might be a problem. But I gotta break it loose. So what I've done is laid it on the side and I'm adding adding some weights here.
basically just want to break it loose. This fixture was uh, very carefully measured, laid up on the on the CAD uh, CAD drawing system, and points uh, exactly determined. Set up the triangles. This gives me what amounts to a angle about 18 and a half degrees uh, slant back. When all the bosses are all set and the thing is cleaned up as a master model, uh, then this whole plaster uh, hemisphere, this little larger than the hemisphere, will be picked up and dropped into the other hemisphere. And that will give us uh, the form in which I can make the other the rest of the casting. Quick setting epoxy paste here. I'll set this in here. Preset the plug. I've properly located it. I've got my marks in here. This should fit right in here. That's I need. Okay, this is the application of the gel coat. Let us sit for a day. Then I'll go ahead and build up the rest of the layers. From this uh, master model, we now have uh, this replica in the form of the tool. Now, once the, uh, the shells come back, now this is of course the tool, but when the shells come back inside of the sphere, uh, the mirror is going to be located inside of the cell. It'll actually snap in, the cell will close down, and the cell will be located offset. See, in a previous one, I've had them centered, but I'm going to be offsetting this one in order to get a, a greater depth of uh, uh, base and get, get more flotation. Of course, the mirror cell will have basically a cover which will be hinged and will hinge up for access. Now, these parts I've made up for the prior assembly. Now, to hold the, the mirror in proper location, what I had started was uh, actually a very efficient structure that would have been, this would be made in, in fiberglass, for example, and then about three points, I would have a, a threaded stud in which my adjusting screws would each float a three-point flotation. That would give me a nine-point flotation system with the supports being at the 70% zones. Now, this is extremely efficient uh, use of the structure, but one problem I've got is that when the optics are tilted to a side, I have no forces to contain this to keep it from sliding. If I go with this system, I have to do an elaborate uh, truss structure that would hold the mirror to keep it from sliding off. So what I've decided to do is to utilize part of the, part of the system that I had for the 42-inch sphere, which was a, actually a containing wall along the lower portion, this, this being down vertically in gravity through 180 degree saddles what I would have and uh, what I figure is that I can use part of my existing design but I'll have to modify it to to offset it uh, off to this side. I'll show you what... what. Now this is the uh, fiberglass shell uh, that I had fabricated for the 40, the 42 inch sphere. Of course this is the 30 inch sphere uh, and I'm just showing you here just for the convenience but this is the saddle arrangement that I had set up to contain the, the main mirror. So 
the cell would normally fall in here and would uh, nest probably against the felt pad against here and here. This would contain it laterally uh, from 180 degrees on down. Uh, on these two, these are cylindrical surfaces. This was a conical surface to allow removal. What I'll do is I will try to retain what I've already modeled up here. I'll use this as a master model and make basically a new tool from this. I will retain these features probably only about so far out. And I'll contain all of this area, the, uh, the mounting points here and here. But I have to modify this to come out to a new surface here. So when I bond this whole fiberglass assembly to the inside of the sphere, uh, I'll get my lateral s support through, uh, through this area. The other thing I'll do is I'll make a, a pyramid structure going inward. I'll, it'll be the same material, but it'll deflect down and go down into a pyramid until it intersects and truncates to uh, comply with the actual contour, or actually about a quarter inch inside of this contour. Then I'll make that assembly and then I'll bond that inside the sphere to uh, make the containing structure. And I'll probably put some kind of a small support member here so that when I drop the mirror and I can pilot it, have it drop on that surface and then I can just normally allow it to fall into place. This is the actual fiberglass uh, aft bulkhead assembly that was going to be used with the 42 inch sphere. This would have laid centrally within the, uh, the sphere diameter. And that was to provide basically support for the mirror assembly, which again was a C-ring assembly. The primary mirror would drop into here and would rest, seat itself against these two surfaces, which are cylindrical. This surface has been tapered back slightly to allow for a clearance for dropping it in and installing it. Now I'm basically going to use the same thing with the reduced size sphere, but I'm going to have to reshape all the parts relating to the interface of the other sphere. I'm not going to have this entire area here. I'm only going to need maybe a half inch of this area here, continue on down and a half inch of this, and I'll make the slice that'll come right straight back. Then I've got to rebuild this area to match the new sphere diameter. But everything here pretty much stays, uh, stays the same. Now it's going to be a, a nine point flotation system. This roughly represents a mock up of that flotation. Uh, these are the nine points to support the mirror. Now one problem I've got is that when I'm installing the mirror through the hole I'll have to drop this down and I'll really only have one hand to hold it. It's going to be very difficult. So to drop it down I don't want it to come down and damage, damage these cells. So I basically built a small part which will be integral in the final assembly. Basically it's going to be this surface will be deformed up to this area so when I drop the the actual cell in, it will bottom out and hit on that support and then this will drop down in place and then that will provide all the support that I'm going to need. So basically what I'm going to do is install this cell and then uh, take a plaster cast. See this is the original fiberglass which is the actual shape that I want. So if I take a plaster cast of that, that will become a tool that will allow me to come back and take a new fiberglass off of that and replicate this entire surface. But I'm going to have a trim line because I don't need the entire surface. And where this trim line comes back in through here, I'll have to do quite a bit of rework in this area to get it to match the new sphere. But actually I can do it in two stages. I can pull a cast off of the part I want to keep intact. I can pull a cast off and then I can rework the cast, I can build onto that with plaster in order to get the new shape that I want. And that's simply just a matter of finding where the center of the new sphere is. It'll be offset about four inches and just swinging, swinging the radius of that.